What's up, everyone? We are live at five. It's Monday, June 15th. June 15th. Shouldn't the Tony Awards have happened by now? Don't do this to me now. Sorry, I'm Monday. Paul Antoric. <laughs> I'm Beth Stevens. And we're joined, as always, by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello, everybody. Hello, Happy everybody. Monday. Hey, Beth. We have somebody fantastic here today. His first time on Live at Five. Who's our guest? <laughs> That's hard to believe. It's Jelani Aladdin, who's a member of the Broadway.com family, <laughs> as a former yeah, I mean, blogger. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. we will talk all about. Uh, he has, there's a special event happening tonight. We'll talk all about it, and and there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about. We will get to Mr. Aladdin, but first, today's news. <laughs> Guys, we did actually have an award show happen over the weekend. That's right. The Drama Desk Awards happened yesterday. Virtually. Everything's virtual now. And it was the 65th annual Drama Desk Awards. And let's talk about some of the winners. It was hosted by our friend, New York One's Frank Delella. And top winners, I feel like I say this every week, A Strange Loop won Best Musical. Out, they do outstanding, outstanding musical. Outstanding. Also, outstanding because it's outstanding. Uh, the Inheritance uh, was the outstanding play. Little Shop of Horrors was the outstanding revival of a musical, and A Soldier's Play was the outstanding revival of a play. You can see all of the winners on Broadway.com. But it was great stuff. Adrienne Warren won her first award ever. That's what she said on Twitter. She's never won another award. Oh, seems, seems crazy. She's so talented, that. but there you go. So Adrian Warren won for Tina, and you can see all the winners on Broadway.com. Do you know, it's funny thing about that outstanding thing. Did you know, I've been doing a lot of research on the Tony Awards, and did you know that they didn't ever want to use the word best with the Tony Awards? In the very beginning, they were weird. like, we're, ne we're never going to do that. We're never going to do that. Well, well, don't get married uh, to the Tony rules. <laughs> You're quoting someone everyone here doesn't know, but I get that's it. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> A bunch of stars are coming together to honor the late, great Terrence McNally. Yeah, this is, I mean, we, we're always down for honoring Terrence McNally, right? Of I course. mean, why not? So this is a special event happening on OV, O-V-E. -E. I'm not very familiar with OV. Are you? No, but I'll look it Beth, up. See someone talk about Terrence love, McNally. I know you love saying virtuals. I know you love annoying me with that word, so I'll say it back. This is a <laughs> virtual discussion. It's not a real discussion, it's a virtual discussion right. <laughs> about the life and legacy of Tony winning playwright, Terrence McNally. This is happening June 17th, which I, I have to look, it's on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Uh, moderator Susan Merkji of the Tribeca Film Festival and filmmaker Jeff Kaufman will lead the talk and it'll include John Benjamin Hickey of the Drama Desk Award winning The Inheritance. I'm excited. Okay. Andre Shields, uh, John Glover, um, and of course, Hickey and Glover were in Love, Our Compassion, and Under the Shields was Horse in the Full Monty. Uh, so and there'll also be clips from Every Act of Life, which is the fantastic um, documentary that Jeff Kaufman made. And so you should go to, go, go to the article on our site, and you can RSVP to uh, watch this special discussion for yourself. This Tony winner and a bunch of other stars are set for a new group of radio plays. This is really exciting, guys. Uh, that, of course, is Felicia Rashad, Tony winner, Felicia Rashad. And she is among the stars for Black Women and the Ballot. That is the name of three short radio plays that will be available on Juneteenth. And Juneteenth, of course, is June 19th. So, and of course, that is the celebration that uh, of us celebrating the end of slavery, the day that marked the end of slavery in 1865. So this is the American Slavery Project, and they partnered with 11 additional theater companies, Crossroads Theater Company, Civic Ensemble, Classical Theater of Harlem, just a bunch of great, very recognizable names, lots of great stuff. So check that out. Big names, three radio plays. It's not really virtual if it's radio, right, Paul? It's just radio. It's just you listen. Just stop it. Enough. <laughs> yeah, and if fans have a time to ask their questions to this huge playwright for a new series. Oh, is that what we're doing? David Henry Huang. He's fantastic. Um, you know, he was the first Asian American to win the Tony for Best Play. I've just been doing nonstop Tony research. That's what I do. You're uh, Mr. Tony right now. So, so there's a special playwriting workshop and Q&A um, with David Henry Huang. And this is all happening as part of the American Theater Wing's ongoing master class series, which is one of the ways that they're keeping 
things interesting and busy during this weird time. Uh, and this will be moderated by the Wings president and CEO, Heather Hitchens. Uh, it's on June 18th, which is three days from now. I just have to look at my calendar to like figure out where we are. Uh, that's math. Thursday. Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, and this is all part of the American Theater Wings uh, National COVID-19 Response Fund, this masterclass series. Um, and just go to the site and you can RSVP to be a part of this. So there's a lot of things, a lot of things to do. Hey Beth, we didn't yeah. talk about cancellations today. That's good. Uh, no, and don't jinx it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got okay, a big coming up. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you tell everyone about today's guest? Gladly. Yes, you guys, today to kick off a fresh new week of Live at Five Home Edition, we got Mr. Jelani Aladdin here to talk all about hosting tonight's 2020 Schubert Foundation High School Theater Festival that is happening tonight. You can actually watch the awards on broadway.com at 7 p.m. So it's really exciting. As we said before, Aladdin is a former Broadway.com vlogger who took fans behind the scenes at Frozen, which marked his Broadway debut playing Kristoff. And then last summer, he played Hercules, very casual, it's fine. <laughs> you guys can follow him on social at Jelani Aladdin, and it's two L's, not two D's. Make sure you do that. You can follow him, put all of your questions in the comments below, and please welcome Jelani and Paul. Hey, friend. Hey, Jelani Aladdin. What's up? What's up? What's up? You guys have so much news. You know, I feel like it feels like um, there's so much happening, yet nothing's happening, but it's so much happening, you know? Um, yeah, the, so, the entire world is changing, yeah. and, and then little theater things are happening, little events you can do. Right, right, yeah. right. It's yeah. awesome. Uh, I can't believe you've never been on Live at Five. I cannot believe that either. Like, I'm I feel so like I've done so many Broadway.com things, and this is the one corner that I've not seen yet. So well, I'm well done. It's, a, talk with you. it's a little different now. It's a little different. Yeah. It's not, yeah. it's not what, we, what it normally is. Um, how are you holding up? It's June 15th. It's uh, June 15th. Somehow we made it all the way to June. And I feel like Mark like five years ago. Um, how I'm holding up, you know, it's funny. I feel like I've had to, I've had to draft a text, actually, to respond to people when they ask me, how are you? I, and my text is, I'm a warrior. I've always been. I just hope I don't always have to be, you know? So I feel like this time right now is really, um, you know, people are out there, um, Black people are out there dying, mm -hmm. dying. And so um, for me right now, it's all about finding ways to, to find justice, to make sure that we secure justice, and also that we change the world once and for all, period. End of story. Now's the time to end racism. Let's mm -hmm. just do it. Mm -hmm. And we've been, I've been following you on social media. Yeah. And you, I, I, you were in the New York Times. There was a, an interview with you in the New York Times. Uh, you, you've been sort of one of the leaders in the theater world in the last couple of weeks, sort of um, turning the attention a little bit and looking, looking inward at the Broadway world and yeah. seeing sort of how to, how to address uh, what people are feeling and, and sort of, um, applying this real world, you know, there's protests happening, there's a lot mm -hmm. of issues with police brutality, but then it brought up a lot of emotions within people in our community and, and yeah, a lot of yeah. things things to talk about. So well, what, what, what was your personal like awakening to all that? Um, my personal awakening, I feel like that I've been awoke, I've been I've been aware of it, you know, since I began working in this industry way sure. back when I began working in regional theater long before I came to Broadway. Um, I think it's been always been part of my battle, always been part of my story um, because, you know, me being, you know, playing Kristoff was a huge statement sure. in and of itself and then continuing on to do Hercules. And in those two experiences, the time between those two experiences, learning um, it's kind of, I always say that like the, like, uh, the curtain was like peeled away from my eyes. And so the, mm. the thing that was Broadway, um, no longer became this magical mystical thing. And I saw all the cracks and the flaw uh, flaws and the holes. And I was like, oh, all these things need to be cleaned up before this thing actually, um, becomes a solid structure. And so now we're exposing these holes and these cracks. Um, and, and, and I'm hoping to offer ways to make it better. Um, I feel like, you know, yes. I'm upset and I'm angry and I'm hurt, but I think that more importantly, I want to teach people how we can make it better. Right. 
Right. So you were ready. You were ready to uh, oh, to yeah. have these conversations. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's but, part of the re- I mean, to be quite honest, with you, it's, it's part of the reason why I decided to leave Frozen um, back in 2018. Um, I did not decide to renew my contract there um, because I knew that I had a larger job to do. That that there was this whole world of the arts that I wanted to help influence and change um, through telling of my story. So that's when I began to write. I mean, during this quarantine, I opened up my production company, Dumont Millennial Productions. And um, nice. and, uh, and, I'm, and I'm ready to kind of share stories that I think that now finally the world is ready to hear. Well, I think we all can agree there yeah. there are not enough uh, people of color, especially in the in the boardrooms and in, mm-hmm. in the the broad mm-hmm. creating theater, right? Producing creating theater, creating, owning producing theater, producing theater, yeah. creating creating theater. So that that's a world that you definitely would love to help and, uh, shake up. Yep, and that's the world I'm stepping into. Cool, yeah. that's awesome. What kind yeah. what kind of things? Um, so what have you been doing with that? What kind of things okay. excite you? And what kind cool. of? Um, so right now, the things that kind of excite me. Are um, I'm working on a a children's a 30 minute children's musical um, that I'm going to that's going to be kind of shot a la a la Zoom. I hate the word Zoom. It's not really Zoom. It's with, yeah. I feel like anything oh, yeah. that is over camera on your computer now becomes Zoom, and that's not yeah. Really we're not on Zoom, ever. This is not Zoom. We're not <laughs> zooming right now. We're not zooming. Yeah. Um, but it's it's so essentially it's a movie musical, a 30 minute movie musical. Cool. Um, I can't say much more because we're still getting the option for the rights from the from the video game Pajama Sam is what we're really trying to do. Take the um, game Pajama Sam and make a 30 minute musical from it. Um, and uh, I'm writing my own TV pilot that I actually now that's finished writing. I've been writing that for the past two years um, that I'm now in the selling phase of that and trying to get um, people involved and networks involved. It's also a coming of age story about a young man that actually survives the system. How about that? Um, uh, and I'm, you know, trying to option a book to write a one man play about a book. And there's so many, um, things in the works that are are beginning that didn't begin just because of the past two weeks that I've been actually been working on for the past year. I've just been very silent about them. Um, and I'm silent no more. Amazing. I love that. I'm excited. Well, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, um, as Caitlin mentioned, you were in Hercules last year, which I know was yeah. sort of like a dream, a dream come true, not just for you, but for fans of that that property. That was an mm. exciting, what was it, two weeks? It was like a two week thing? Only like a, nine performances. I think we added, not, okay. one, I, think it was, I think it was 10 performances in total. Okay, it was, it, that's right, the add on, right. It was quick. Um, and you, I, I wanna talk about, you actually put on social media because a lot of this is about educating um, people, right? We all wanna have conversations now about what's the best way to to fix the way we talk to each other and the way yep. things are presented. And I actually saw you on Instagram, you sort of took Broadway.com, you brought up this article that we wrote. And I, I wanna talk about it because, mm-hmm. you know, we're friends and we're both here. And and yep. and and, I, and it's really interesting to me, but you, uh, we did a big article with you when, when you were in Hercules and you kind of, um, you pointed out you're not a big fan of the phrase colorblind casting. That, yes. that, that's that's sort of talk talk a little bit about that. It's it's sort of this um, industry standard term now, right? And it has been for many years, uh, which which I think is is totally um, wrong. I, I think right. that um, I think that to say that you're colorblind is actually the the problem is actually what we're fighting against right now, mm-hmm. right? To say that you are looking at me and not seeing the fact that I am an African American um, denies my authenticity, uh, the authenticity of my work, the authenticity of my history, um, all that I am, which is the only thing that I can bring to a piece, right? Um, a great teacher once said, uh, you never leave yourself behind. So if, you know, I was casting Paul Wanterak in a piece, you know, I, you would bring your history to the piece, mm-hmm. you know? And because you're casting Jelani Aladdin, you then have to bring all of his history to the piece. And the character is therefore informed differently because of that. Um, and so you're never actually blind to the color of someone that you're casting. You are actually, you should be more in tune with it. You should be more conscious about it um, because you also don't want to put forward narratives um, that are against the 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 fight for good. Like, why would you put, you know, in Frozen Hans as an African-American um, 
because you're then perpetuating the fact that this black man is a vengeful and trying to kill people and manipulative. And, you know, that's not the narrative that I think is the healthiest for society. Um, whereas Christoph, sure, that's the nurturer, the person that cares for everyone, the person that um, comes to understand the power of love. I think that's a stronger message. And I think that, um, you know, is exactly what we're fighting for. And then there's the, the, um, the part of it that's like, uh, uh, well, anyone can play the part. Sure, sure. Mm. I think anyone can play the part. But when you do cast someone, so when they did cast me as Hercules, there was um, a, a, a discipline or a rather um, a, a closer look at the piece and said, okay, so if we're doing this, we're making this choice, how does it affect all the other choices of the piece? Um, and that for me meant the world because that really didn't happen at Frozen, in Frozen um, because it's such a locked in piece. And it was, you know, mm -hmm. it was two years, three years after the movie came out. People really just wanted to see the movie. I'll right. say it, to be quite honest. But, um, you know, with Hercules, we're then, okay, so then why, why does Phil have to be African-American? Or, you know, why is it important that, you know, um, you, he dances this way or that he, you know, s says these kind of talks this way. And, you know, it, it, it's a matter of bringing my history, all mm -hmm. that I am, me, mm -hmm. Jelani Aladdin, me growing up in Brownsville, Brooklyn, me then going to New Canaan High School, and me then going to NYU, me then experiencing racism all my life, just walking out the door and being a black man. All right. of that has to be alive inside the piece. Mm -hmm. And so as journalists, you would prefer, it's like, we don't need us to spotlight the race of the performer in that way, I because it, it's because you think it's irresponsible or it's just, it's just not the best approach to, to sort of make that be the angle. The yeah. angle is not. I mean, I was cast for the job because I can do the job because I'm the right. best person to do the job. You know, right. I mean, let's be clear. I was actually fired from Hercules and then they went, they went on an audition process to look for someone to play Hercules and they came back to me. So that just then proves that like, I am then again, the person to play, to do the best person. You're like, no, I was really the best. I mean, a lot of people don't know that part of the story that after yeah, the third reading, you know, the truth is I couldn't sing Go the Distance. And, um, you know, a certain member on the team didn't want to take the chance on of, on me. Um, and through um, a audition process, they came to realize that, you know, I was the best person to do the job. And then I was put in lessons with Liz Kaplan and I was able to learn how to sing the song. Um, to then put in the work, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Well, um, yeah, I'm glad to talk to you about that. And by the way, if you had, if you had at the, at the minute that the article had gone live, if you had voiced that and something bothered you about it, I would have changed it immediately. Just, of course, of course. And I know. think, you know, I think also I'm learning, you know, how to speak up for so long, you sure. know, we were told to like just swallow things and that and that and we move on with that. But also now there's a learning curve on our side to be like, hey, actually, no, that actually is not that to sit well with me. Let me let me express right. that. You know, that's why in the New York Times article I talk about communication. It's a it's a it's a two way street, right? Yeah. You know, we have to be able to say what we want and we have to be able to know that we're being heard or listened to and understood. Um, mm -hmm. And so communication is it takes both sides. Totally, totally. I'm glad we're communicating, Jelani. Yes. So let's talk about these. As it is. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about these uh, high school kids. So, oh my God! These so the Schubert school. Schubert Foundation High School Theater Festival. This is for New York City high schools, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so tonight at seven o'clock, you're hosting uh, the show. Who else is on there? Adam Chandler, Barat, um, Jane Harkness, Carly Hughes, George Salazar, and Nate Scott. And it's honoring like 160 students. Five, so, and you're going to get a glit. You're going to be able, be able to watch. We're all going to be able to watch five of these high schools. So what happened is um, a bunch of high schools, like 30 high schools, submitted their shows, and only okay. five were selected. Um, that's the Brooklyn High School for the Arts. They're doing Fame. Curtis High School, they're doing Lucky Stiff. Frank Sinatra School of the Arts, they're doing Hairspray. Repertory Company High School for Theater of Arts is doing a, a number from Aida. And I think something that's really, really cool is that the Talented Unlimited High School is doing um, a scene, scene a play from The Wolves. Uh, yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah. And, and so uh, 
And you picked, you watched all 30 and you picked the top. I'm just kidding. That wasn't you. you didn't do that. You didn't no, do that. I had no, um, uh, uh, I did not help pick at all. Okay. Um, you get to watch the watch what is being streamed tonight. And I'm telling you, it's amazing. It's amazing how innovative these performances are because, you know, I myself in, you know, in making this movie musical thing, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. I could do that too and that too. Um, and what they're doing, what they're um, finding ways to still create theater online is so awesome and it, it proves the point that like theater can never die and will never die because we just keep finding new ways to make it right, right. yeah right, right. Pretty cool so and were you involved in the high school theater i was involved in high school theater but not in new york city so i actually went to philip Schuyler middle school for the gifted and talented here in the city because i was of course you're gifted and talented of course <laughs> i don't know i mean i sang in choir that was the most gifted i was and I, I remember um the um my senior year i had like a solo and that was like the big oh. thing. you had a solo at the spring concert then you were like it um <laughs> uh, but uh, these you know high school theater that's the place where it happened. That's the room where it happened. If we want to talk about rooms where it happened, it was for me, yeah, you yeah. know, even though it wasn't in New York City, high school theater for me was where I found musical theater. That's where I found good old Susical the musical and I played the cat in the hat. Like that's where it began. And oh it's like God, yeah. that's where we start geeking out about, you know, how cool this art form is. And um, some of us may not ever end up becoming professional artists. <laughs> But it's a place to nurture ourselves, a place to grow, and a place to learn empathy. Um, and I think that um, we do ourselves, we do society a, a disservice when we don't give the performing arts their due. And, and, and we don't actually give high school students or any students at any age the chance to experience the performing arts. I don't know if you heard, but sometime next month, we're going to do a lot. Broadway.com is going to do a live streaming of Susicle starring you as the cat in the hat. <laughs> Just, I just, we just came up with it right now. It's happening. We're doing it. Oh, the things you got you think. Oh, the things <laughs> you <can> think. <laughs> I like remember every word from that show. You know, I, I love that show. show. Are you it's kidding me? Show. It sticks with you. Oh my God, it's and so then, good. And then it makes me cry. And then it makes oh me cry. God. All the, all the Gertrude songs. I remember I was always thinking like, oh, the Gertrude songs are so good. You know? Um, yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. So that's all happening seven o'clock tonight. You guys can watch it on Broadway.com. We'll have mm -hmm. the, the video embedded. But let's bring Caitlin back in and find out what the fans are asking. Hello. Ooh, what are the fans asking? That's something we do here on Live at Five. I know you've never been here, but we do that. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. We're learning so much. So a lot of there's a lot of questions. So we're gonna go. First one, Clarissa on YouTube wants to know, what musicals are you listening to in quarantine? Ooh, well, you know, I've actually been on a roller coaster with that. So in the beginning of quarantine, I was very depressed. Um, sorry. I, could not, I could not get off my couch. I kind of was, you know, as I was, as the whole world was, we're mourning the loss of everything that we knew before, right? Um, and so I found solace in Dear Finn Hansen <laughs> um, and, um, and listening to So Big, So Small over and over again, kind of like- wow. <laughs> help me like put like the world into perspective that like you know like i will still have my life no matter how big this this COVID event is and how, or wow. how it becomes that like i will still be able to carry on and um that song was really really uh did it for me i'm picturing you just like rocking in bed listening to something so small over and bed. over and over my bed. i slept on the couch i couldn't even make it into the bed oh. um, listening to, to, to uh rachel bay jones you know singing singing, oh, singing no. to it's a lot it's a lot flat. <laughs> yeah so that's a go-to yeah 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 that okay, cool. begin. yeah i'm glad it are, you listening I'm glad to, it are you listening to any fun musicals now are you okay <laughs> um i don't know i'm kind of like not i'm kind of straight away from musicals now i feel like i find myself listening to a lot of gospel music you know mm -hmm. things that are inspirational and upbeat I find myself, you know, I, I did for a while listen to um, a lot of Hairspray. I know where I've been, you know, oh, hits yeah. home. a lot of The Color Purple hits home. Um, anything that Cynthia Revo sings hits home, let's be real. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I could open up my Spotify and take a good look. You know, I did listen to a lot of Hamilton the other day. When this when this all began, I did listen re listen to the entire score of Hamilton, and I was like, man, that Lin Manuel Miranda is a freaking genius. <laughs> Just like the way that he has captured the American Revolution, and here we are in the second American Revolution, and you're just like, it just all lines up. 
Yeah. Mm. Are you are you excited for the Disney Plus uh, premiere? Oh, I'm so excited, and you know I've always seen that show in a in a different light, in like a um, in like this is the. <laughs> I've always understood the irony, or is it irony is the right word? I'm not sure what the right word is, but the um, the double play on the fact that there are people of color um, mm -hmm. telling the story that is so um, so white in, in its creation, right. like all these people were white, and yeah. yet we're talking about a revolution. These people through the Boston Tea Party was a riot. You want to talk about rioting? <laughs> the American Revolution was a riot, and we're and here we are judging. Um, black and brown people when they choose to riot for their rights and their freedom right. and their justice. Right. And it's like, that's what the white people did. So uh, I don't know why y'all judging. Um, right. And so I've always seen, been like, ah, Lynn has gotten mainly white people to swallow the pill of this play, knowing that what it's talking about right now is reflecting the world that we exactly, we live in. That the, this American revolution was always brewing. Um, and Hamilton was on the brink of that. So I, I think it's, I'm really glad for people to watch it inside of their homes and experience it that way. Fantastic. Amazing. Love it. Well, going off of that, Aaron wants to know if you were to be in Hamilton, which character yeah. would you want to play? Hamilton, <laughs> end of story. Oh. That was so Done. easy. That Great. was so right. easy. <laughs> he knew, he knew. Amazing. And, how okay. and would, you, would you need a lot of rehearsals or do you know a lot of it? <laughs> I would need a lot of rehearsal. Okay. <laughs> I would need a lot of rehearsal, uh, but I think the essence is right. <laughs> Love it. Cool. All right. So Samantha Elliott wants to know which Broadway actor do you want to work with most? Ooh. Oh. Which Broadway actor? You know, I really do want to work with Cynthia. I really, really do. I was just picturing, can you imagine if she recorded so big, so small, like tonight oh. you would lose your mind. You would lose your mind. <laughs> yeah. Her voice That's your keeping... challenge, Cynthia Revo. That's your challenge. Go yeah, she can do so no big, wrong so for me. No wrong. Um, I definitely want to work with her. Um, I definitely want to work with Lynn. I want to work with Lynn. I want to collaborate with yeah. Lynn. Um, Gosh, there's such a long list. Everybody's so talented. I mean, now the number of people, the number of people that have been on Broadway, you know, um, in the past in the past ten years, like I want to work with every single one of them. Is that fair to say? <laughs> okay. So you're not you you still want to keep performing. You want to be you want to be in front of the footlights and behind. You know, both. you know, in TV and film, people can do that a lot. You know, you look at Issa Rae, you look at Donald Glover, um, yeah. and it's like I'm ready for that kind of same effect or, or that same kind of reality and truth to be available in the theatrical world, you know? Um, who's to say that if Hercules was to come to Broadway, if I could if I could produce it and be in it, you know, who knows? I don't know. But, you know, um, I think that's kind of where I, I, I think acting is always a part of me, will always be a part of me. Mm -hmm. um, and I never want to lose that part of me. And I'm excited to share some news that recently has come to light in quarantine, you know, and uh, a new TV series that I'm going to be a part of, which I'm very excited about that too. What's that? I can't tell you what it is. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, 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 I want to tell you though, if you ever star in and produce Hercules, make sure you get a piece of the merchandise too. Because <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, gonna buy, we're gonna have to make some gonna, black dolls. <laughs> people are gonna buy that merch. People are gonna buy that merch. Heck yeah! <laughs> Amen to that. All right, I think we can end with this question. Okay. So, basing off of you doing the high school awards tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, Sophia says, wants to know that after watching all of those, she says, as someone who wants to one day be on Broadway, what's a good mm. tip for any young aspiring performers? Mm. A good tip. Okay. Um, I have like 5 million, but um, I think I'm gonna go with the one that I was talking about earlier. And I'll talk about it a little deeper about never leaving yourself behind. I think for so long, you know, we as, and by we, I mean, black, you know, indigenous persons of color actors, we for so long felt that we had to fit into a box. We had to to change ourselves, quite literally change ourselves. I used to have a gap and I changed my, my teeth, you know what I mean? Quite literally change ourselves to fit the form of something that never really was, we were never really invited to that party. And we kind of found our way in. Um, and I say never again, never again, everything that you are, is beautiful, worth it, valid, authentic, um, um, uh, should be celebrated. So never leave any of that behind and, and trust that what you are will guide you to what you will become because everything that you need is already inside you. Um, and so that's what I would say. 
That was perfect. Beautiful words. I love that. I love that. So articulate. You know what? I didn't even. I, I. I'm. I'm sorry. I didn't get to show off your photo. Oh, oh. Look, look! There he is. There he is. Zero. Zero. I didn't even get to show that off. And also, this is. So this is tonight. Yes. You guys can watch this at seven o'clock, and it's also uh, right here on Broadway.com. Jelani, so good to see you. Oh, so good to I, see all of you guys. I'm glad you're all you all safe and healthy. Same to you. I hope that you, uh, you you make it through quarantine. And I can't wait to hear about all these projects you have brewing inside that head of yours. I can oh, tell yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot just like waiting to explode out. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Not like Haiti. Uh, you know, maybe in a, in, a, in a cooler released way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, hey, Caitlin, we, we're having another uh, – Michael James Scott is coming back tomorrow. We're having another little panel. So mm -hmm. why don't you talk more about that? and uh, send us off. Thank you so much again, Jelani. Great to see you. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for another fun episode of Live at Five Home Edition. You can follow along where you get your podcast by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Like Paul said, tomorrow we're having another episode of our Live at Five roundtable discussions hosted by Aladdin's Michael James Scott. And tomorrow joining him is going to be Nikki M. James, Brandon Victor Dixon, and Montego Glover. So you really don't want to miss out. Stay safe and we'll see you tomorrow.